dear friends. Welcome to Education 3000, to our videos on education. I am Noemi Paimal, the founder of Education 3000. And um, I'm so happy to be again <laughs> with the video and with you, Dave, how are you? I'm good, Naomi. Hi, everyone. I'm David Fegan, the International English Program Coordinator at Education 3000. And we're looking in this video at the red pedal of the seven pedal schools. So what's the red pedal, Naomi? Uh, the red petals. Here, here the, the slides. Remember with all the, pe the, the petals of the seven petal schools, there is one petal I really like, and it's very important. And it's called the red petal. It's about to do, to act, to have some activities, to really, if you have an idea, you can do it. In, in the matter, I mean, on earth. And uh, I think education is not complete if you can't go to actions. It's not enough to have a good, good ideas or, or have a lot of knowledge if you can't help the society and do something with your knowledge, you see? So that's why we have the red petals. And um, you, you should see that the children and the young people, the, the love when you say, oh, we are going to say to do something. What do you want to do? I want to do a car with running on water. They are so excited because it's a project, it's concrete and they feel so good. Totally. So doing is very important. And sometimes at, 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 in our education, we don't have as many opportunities to do as maybe we'd like or as maybe we should because there are all these steps that we have to follow sometimes good, sometimes not so good, before we can do. So for our viewers who have been watching this, you'll be familiar with the other pedals that we've looked at. But for those of you who maybe this is the first time you've tuned in to one of our videos, the Seven Pedal Schools for Peace is a cutting edge, comprehensive and dynamic education uh, proposal created by Education 3000. The Seven Pedals represent seven pedagogical areas for the harmonious development of the human being and for a durable peace culture. And we can review them quickly. Yeah, so we've already looked at the, the first five, the blue one, physical and kinesthetic development, yellow, articulated cognitive development. And the pink pedal is social and multicultural development, peace culture and emotional intelligence. The white pedal is aesthetic development, arts, geometry and bioarchitecture. The green pedal is ecological development and clean energy systems. Today, we're looking at the red pedal, hands on development, applied science, uh, sciences, sorry. And the final pedal, the purple pedal, uh, the purple petal, which we'll look at in the next video. <laughs> a little yeah. bit of a tongue purple twister for me. Or violet, uh -huh. <laughs> as you like violet. <laughs> uh -huh. So you Personal can see- Personal development and, uh -huh. and self-sciences. Sorry, Naomi, what were you saying? That it's a complete integral education. All the petals will complement each other and sometimes they will interwine as well. But uh, that's the beauty of it. You can see all the different level of development of the human being are attended and towards what? Towards an active society as well and taking care of the environment. So it's complete. That was the idea with the seven petal school and for peace, because of course this will end up with a beautiful peace culture locally and of course international yeah i like this school like <laughs> so the red pedal like we said hands uh -huh. hands on development and applied sciences and we so have some, a lot of benefits from that yeah there, there are a lot of benefits self-esteem students feel useful and also comfortable with the future um it's it helps to find their vocation community service as well, multiple intelligences, uh, hands-on activities develop lateral thinking, interpersonal intelligence, and neuroeducation. So maybe some of these, you want to explain a little bit more the benefits uh, the or why they're so good. Yeah. Plus, I'm so happy because neuroeducation really nowadays is emphasizing, emphasizing the importance of doing and have the creativity through the doing and teamwork. So we are really 
having a lot of workshop and the possibility of doing is really tuned with the last research of neuroeducation. Plus remember all the benefit of moving and all the neurotransmitter and this, all the connection with the synapses. And they are in and them. We have more synapses and more use of the two brains, two hemispheres of the brain. The other one I want to tell you, Dave, and everybody of you, <laughs> all of you, is students feel useful and comfortable with the future. It's like, you know, maybe young people, they say, oh, we are going to do that. Or well, what for? Or they are like, you know, with a lack of motivation because they don't feel the utility or the usefulness of what they are doing. With this petal, they feel useful. They feel, yes, I can do that. Can you see what I did? It's like you you have a, like a kind of fulfillment. You feel that sense of have, fulfillment. Yeah, you do something that's it's practical and useful and comfortable with the future. It means, and you are not afraid of the future because you know how to fix your bike. You know how to do something. You know how to do furniture out of wood. You are not afraid of doing. If you have a bright idea, you know how to do it and um, and develop the whole project all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a completely 100% part of education, this red petal. A couple of examples. So what, what can we see in some of these examples? For example, the we've got the uh, solar cooker there in Bolivia where we live. Yes, this is a solar cook, cooker. Uh, mechanics, weaving, building. I tell you, there is a story. There is a guy, and it, it was he was um, eleven years old boy, and uh, it, the story was in Ecuador. At that time, I, I started Education Three Thousand in Ecuador, South America, and this guy said, eleven years old, I don't want to go to school anymore, and the mom said, okay, but you won't stay at home doing nothing. What if tomorrow you go with dad to the, um, it was a building, how do you say, La Obra? It was a, like a construction site. The construction site, because the dad was, is, was an architect. And the kid, of course, he said, yes, as, as long as I don't have to go to school. Yes, 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 of course, I'll go with dad tomorrow. And the next day, he came back, but, but you should see his face like, shining like the cheeks all red and he said mom mom it was the best day of my life because all day long he was um, helping with the bricks and helping with the brick layers and everything and he was full of life and vitality vitalidad um, vitality vitality so then i thought i said okay this is the petal we have to add definitely action and feel this joy of doing. And, the, and plus he was learning how to build, he learned team building, he learned about the brick layer reality, he learned about his society, he learned about math. Complete, complete day. Totally, and if, if we remember the last pedal that we looked at, the green pedal, which was you know a more environmentally orientated. So the image of the solar cooker and not just that, but all types of environmental sciences to transition you know, to a more sustainable future. Very important to learn how to do these things. Maybe people who are adults, they say, I don't have time for this. I've got to work, I've got kids. Mm -hmm. So education, doing, very important. And we've got some ideas for workshops, robotics, carpentry, electronics, pottery, weaving, construction, cooking, car repair. The list really goes on, doesn't it? There's, there's yes. so many things that we can do. And for instance, you can have in the morning all the topics you want to learn, but in the afternoon, if you have the chance to have workshop and the, the place, make sure they, they can do and they can have an all array of beautiful workshops and possibility of creativity and doing. It's healthy and it's pedagogical. It's, it's beautiful. Here we have some example of carpentry inside schools. And they like it. And people say, oh, no, no, this is dangerous. How can they, they can saw or use a driller? Driller? I mean, this is, they do. They do. They are very responsible and they are so creative. And it's a um, nice way to learn math as well. Poetry, they do love it, of course. <laughs> Who doesn't want to play with clay? 
And it's useful, you know, how to make your pots and all kinds of beautiful artifacts. This one, they love it, fashion design. Do you like it too? Uh, when, I, when I was a child, I liked to dress up, definitely. It was fun. It's like and you can getting make another personality, clothes. right? Yeah, you can make your makeup, you can make some tattoos, but of course tattoos you can take away after, <laughs> you know, this one washable one. And um, yeah, and then you can do a little passerelle and you can walk and yeah, fun, definitely. Workshops or repairing place. I don't know how to say it. When you have all the tools. Workshops. Yeah, you can repair your garages. Garages. Or make your bike. This is a bike made uh, out of bamboo. This is from the Bali school. Remember Green School Bali? We saw on the last video, the green petal. All kind of tools, you know, to repair your patineta, a skateboard, you know, to repair your bike, uh, the washing machine, the shower, whatever. Uh, electricity too. Life skills, right? So that we feel mm -hmm. comfortable with the future. <laughs> Yeah, and you know you can fix or make anything you want. That feels, you feel good. <laughs> Robotics, they do love it. Look, so you learn it, so many things. It incorporates mathematics, physics, engineering, uh, mechanics, electronics, computing, artificial intelligence, control intelligence, creativity. That's a lot of... Uh, skills there in, in yeah. one sort of area impressive and you can start at four five six years old is a good age and you have many classes even online and mm, they like it so much i want to show you one example let's see if that's the next one do you know this um this video on Calum daniel is from uk i haven't seen it before but it does support your idea that, you know, they can start robotics young. It seems like a very complicated subject, but I mean, this, this guy could... yeah, is so amazing. He's only 10 years old. He's a runner on the top of it. And I like that because remember, we have to move the body and he has his own company. He's a robotic teacher. And you can see the comment of the man. Do you want to, to see the video? It's absolutely amazing. Well, nine during the video. His name's Callum Daniel. He's eight years old. He's an entrepreneur. Hey everyone, it's Callum from Tips and Tricks. Children are being taught the secrets of success by other children. My name's Callum Daniel. I'm ten years old, CEO of iCode Robots, and this is my hustle. I got into robotics when I was four years old. I went to four. something called Butlins and I saw a gigantic robot called Titan the Robot. It scared me a bit, but it was really cool. And he just wanted to figure out how Titan worked. I bought him a robot called Mechanoid by Meccano. This is the robot that my first robot when I got when I was three and a half. It took a long time for me to grow taller than him, but now it's hair. And Callum said to me, you know, mummy, it'd be really good if we could buy something and everyone could build so that they didn't have to pay so much. My favourite passion um, would be robotics. So I've always wanted to give some kind of knowledge to kids. And I went into the LDE UTC college and they thought I was so cute because I was like down there at the time. Callum was eight years old when he approached us. He wanted to start a course for coding for kids. Uh, there was nothing available in the area and he wanted to start that himself. We met Callum in 2016 during the Ultra Kids um, Winter Fair. Callum has been able to create a mini community at Heeries for other young people who have similar interests and hobbies. I teach Lego Mindstorms, Lego Redo and Stop Motion. So I'm going to teach you what I do every single Friday to set up my business. First I go onto Lego Mindstorm app. I had to build this model. I call all my staff and then tell them what we're going to be building. I have four permanent staff. It's really interesting having a, a young CEO. He is at the, the, the customer's age range. He, he understands our customers better than, than anybody else. I'd make my sessions two or three hours depending on the child's focus. 
standard sessions that cost £10 that run every Saturday. Um, he generally will make about £200 a class. He always reinvests. So all he really does is buy more robots. <laughs> um, so my typical week is I wake up, brush my teeth, get in shower. I very much struggle to get out of bed on certain days. He actually does online school now. He's home educated. Well, it turns out it was a bit too much when I was doing school running company and going to events every single day of the week. I decided that I needed to be on online school and so did my mum and I get better ed education on online school. I'm a Lego presenter. Today we will be attempting the ramp challenge. I was really excited when my mum told me I got the auditions. I was so happy. I literally ran around my whole house. In the evenings, he's generally at athletics. I'm really into running. I have an amazing coach called Christine Bowman who trains the fastest 11 year old in the UK. And I'm really excited to be working with her for the next four or five years. Track and field is about discipline and Callum's already shown that discipline in his business. I want to uh, get a lot faster because you saying watch out because your record's going to get broke. I'm Callum Daniel, CEO of Ico Robots. Today we will be learning about bulldozers with Lego Mindstorms. It's going to be really fun. You'll have a blast and just enjoy it. I'll come around and turn on your iPad set up for the build. What you can see right there is the full model of it. Play is one of the things that children are actually better than adults at it. Because children have a better creative streak in their minds. The thing I like about these classes is that I learn about robots and motors and stuff like that. Stuff that has to be computed. And also about the Lego. And also about the Lego. We, we build, we build a bulldozer. So guys. You build your robots. Now you've got a program to clear up the snow. How does a good instructor? Um, because he learns build these really cool robots. Oh, oh so I'm just helping them create their first algorithm. I like iCode robots because it gives people like me and my sister here who anything really to do with robots before to get involved and it's really fun and I've never thought it would be this fun. Alright guys I hope you had a great time. Go to icodrobots.com to sign up for more classes and well that's all I have for this lesson. My hustle is a lot because people are very humble in the show and it teaches me that you don't need to follow everyone else. Like my uncle always used to say to me, you shouldn't be a follower, you should be a leader. What's next for my company is I want children to be able to build robotic arms and robotic legs. And you can find me on icorobots.com and then you can book classes if any of your children want to come to my business. His name's Will Smith and he's an actor, you see. He's starring in Aladdin as a genius. <laughs> this guy is amazing. He's got it all figured out. Yeah, 10 years old. And the same idea, kids teach to kids, K E K, that's the best way. And he quit school, he didn't have time. <laughs> that's also amazing. Any comment, Dave? It's, it's very impressive. I mean, he really has a, a very positive attitude to go with his intelligence, right? Yes. And mind you, the, the support of the mum. Please, if you are a parent watching us, support you, follow them, help them, uh, don't clip off the, the wings. They, they can do amazing things. But this was a UK. Do you want to see something about Bolivia and see the difference of the culture? Because it's the same brightness, the same intelligence, adapt to the culture, the local culture. We both live in Bolivia. That's why we choose this video, if you want to have a look. And the name of 
this young person is Esteban Quispe, is from a remote community in the Altiplano, which is, that's the mountains where we are. And as well, he is a genius in, in the robots, but he has to find the piece, you will see where. <laughs> Remind, uh, remind you, Bolivia is quite a um, kind of poor country, but still the young people, they manage their way out. Beautiful. This is where he lives, Pata Kamaya. Es divertido jugar con la basura y rescatar buenas cosas. Mis creaciones son todo un sueño y ese sueño nunca se termina. la basura electrónica para hacer proyectos en robótica y automatización. Yo era niño, quería tener juguetes y no podía cómo hacer, pero ahora a este mundo yo llegué a una familia muy pobre. Había momentos en donde dormíamos en la calle. O alguien era un robot que me gustaba de niño, justamente porque cuidaba el medio ambiente. No sé, se me quedó esa imagen pegada y luego dije, voy a hacerlo este robot y lo voy a hacer. Tardo mucho, pero lo malo es que al buscar, o sea, de la basura electrónica, los componentes correctos, tardas. Y hasta que algunas veces las piezas explotaban. Tienes que lograr algo con lo que tienes. Tienes que buscar soluciones. No he tenido ningún profesor, nada. ¿no? Bueno, ahora ya soy profesor de robótica. Eso es lo que más me hace sentir persona. ¿Alguien sabe qué es robot? Robot es un servidor. Lo más importante es que cuando estoy enseñando la robótica, estos niños se intrigan y me dan ese cariño. Aprendí de que la mente puede ser más fuerte que cualquier otra cosa. Cuando yo hago un robot, me siento feliz, la creatividad abre muchas puertas. So an interesting contrast there. Yeah. Amazing as well. But both, both, well, in that case, kids and young people, they have the, the idea to help. That's uh, interesting, the, this humanitarian view. I want to do robot for agriculture. I want the kids to learn. I want uh, that robotic is not so expensive. So I love this part of the social issues and environment issues. They are both are beautiful. It's amazing through the cultures to find amazing people. And with this red petal, we go straight to community service. If you have a talent, and this is from Shishida actually, pedagogy, Shishida from Japan. Shishida, Dr. Shishida used to say, if you have a talent, if you have a gift, it's not only for your own benefit, it has to be shared with your community, with the society, with your planet. And that's where you really help humanity. And that's the great lecture of the red petal as well. You can do and you can help with this view of solidarity.
and something that seems to come a lot more naturally to children, right, than maybe when we become adults. They do. They, they, they have in, uh, naturally this, this beautiful opening of the mind and of the heart. Here it's a concert for sabios abuelos. That's for elders. They say wise elders. So it's nice. Let's see, you love music. Uh, once in a while, why don't you do a concert for the elders or for a neighborhood or for children as well? I saw many beautiful activities where you really offer your your your, your gift, but as well your your happiness, your your how would I say that? When I see uh, Esteban hugging the kids, he said, "Yes, it's not only robotics." It's something more like it's it's your joy, your vibration. You you give hope to people and you give them this impetus, this will to go on. Beautiful. And this petal very, very is beautiful. A goosebump. It's, it's a beautiful way of combining education, social issues, and your own heart, your own will to help. And, that makes and, education complete. And going back to that contrast that I mentioned, obviously both examples were fine and there's no judgment between cultures. Of we course. can see sort of the different way that, you know, like maybe in, in the UK, not for everybody either, but in, in the case of that child, you know, he, he had the equipment to do it and he was, so he was sort of, you know, a business proposal, fantastic, helping other kids. In Bolivia, in that, in the example as well, not, not everybody in Bolivia lives in rural communities or, or is poor but you know really like education as something like really really important to maybe future opportunities like more basic future opportunities a bit of survival there as well you know so education is very very important and that's why we're doing these videos yeah in all cases this is for the old world and you can adapt to any kind of culture including the, the seven petal school. This is why I like so much school. Oh, <laughs> this is very modest, no? Because we created this idea, but anywhere in the world, any human being, we, we need to have all these components and we can adapt to any kind of situation. This is the beauty of it. Exactly. We've got, you know, like, okay, local needs, but we're a global community as well. So yes. what what is happening in the UK, what's happening in Bolivia, even though it's a local level, ultimately, you know, we have to work together as well as a global community. So if you like these videos, if you liked uh, the information that we shared with you in this video, we've got heaps of videos on YouTube. We've got loads of resources on our website. You can get in touch via Facebook or Gmail. All of these are in the description below to copy and paste. What do we get? We're going to look at the last pedal, the, the purple pedal in the, in the next video. Right. What's the purple pedal about? Next video is about the seventh petal, the last one, and it's called the purple petal or violet petal, and it's about inner development. So it's very important to incorporate this petal in all kind of education or educational proposal. So see you in the next video. See you guys in the next video. Thanks, Naomi. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody. I really love this red petal too. Thank you, Dave, to make it possible in English. <laughs> Ciao.